Welcome back, boys and girls. My name is Harley, and I'm the Gravedigger Queen. Tonight, we have another submission from Shiny Mills. This one is called A Haunted Hotel Interview. And if you've ever stayed in a hotel, you know, sometimes you hear a little bit of bumping. But this time, it might not be what you think it is. Hi. Now, I don't normally like to do things like this because I'm really not a believer in all that woo-woo nonsense. You know, people are always yammering about. And every time I see one of those stories, you know, the true stories about ghosts and whatnot, I have to roll my eyes. But what happened to me, it, it, it opened my eyes just a little bit. Enough that I want to tell somebody, and out of anybody... Y'all seem like the most likely to believe me. Now, at first it was perfect, don't get me wrong. Five out of five stars. And the clerk that checked me in was polite and cheerful and even went a long way to pick up my mood after a long day's drive. Helped me find a decent place to eat. And when I got lost, one of the cleaning staff took time to help me back to my room. Now, the room itself, well, it, it's where things started getting a little bit weird. From the moment I got my luggage settled in the room, things were just off. And the foot of the bed, there was this spot. It was just bone-chilling cold. And I thought it might have been a vent, but it couldn't, I, I, I couldn't find a vent anywhere. Then, there was a weird order. And it lingered in the bathroom. Yeah, lap it up, stinky bathroom. But I'm not talking about that usual bathroom odor. It smelled like illness, like sour, rank meat that had been liberally spritzed with perfume. And it smelled like something had curled up inside the bathroom and died slowly. While the world's most unhelpful nurse kept spraying them down with floral scents. Only in the bathtub, though. I requested a different room right away, obviously. I didn't relish the thought of trying to get clean in that tub. I have a thing about showers, you know. The next room wasn't much better though. I had laid down for the night and was half awake, half asleep when I started hearing the weirdest scuffling sounds moving around the room. You know, where your pet scratched the carpet? Well, that's what it sounded like. I turned the lights on as fast as I could, but when I looked around, there was nothing to be found. No marks in the carpet, nothing. I was feeling a little uneasy after that, but I was still tired, and I still had another day of driving. So, it wasn't too long before I was back to sleep. It must have been maybe two or three in the morning when I woke next feeling confused and wildly disoriented. I couldn't move my arms or legs. I, I couldn't turn my head. And all I could do was blink and look around. And I've suffered episodes of sleep paralysis before. It's scary every time, but I know what it is. And this was not that. When I'm having one of those episodes, I'll either go back to sleep or wake up enough to move. I was fully awake though utterly awake and I still couldn't move an inch in any direction it felt like something unbelievable massive was holding me in place and every breath I took felt labored as though something heavy was resting on my chest and as I was laying there trying to take deep breaths trying to move that bathroom door began to open now remember the odor that I mentioned earlier as the door opened, that same smell began to drift into the room, and I damn well know it wasn't there earlier. I had a shower, so the only smell was my shampoo. Now, though, that rank scent was filling the room, overpowering my senses and growing closer with each breath. Until it was right beside me. And stayed there for a while. 10-15 minutes at least 
And I'm trying to move, trying to keep the smell of whatever the hell it was from making me sick. And that cloud of odor just kept lingering there. Almost physically against me. It was then, in those moments stretched out, that I started to hear the weird scuffling noises again. And I could barely make out anything. It was so dark. But coming out of that fair corner. That's where the sound seemed to be coming. And I could just make out a small shape that seemed to be crawling in all fours. Its movements were stiff, pretty jerky, and its limbs occasionally spasming as it made its way to the side of my bed and slowly stood up. Standing straight up, it was the size of a toddler. And I couldn't make out any discernible features though. It was varying degrees of shadow and darkness that seemed to compromise the shape. It goes without saying at this point, it was beyond panic and with only in the, those realms. Pants shittingly terrified is the best way to describe it. If I could have, I would have been screaming bloody murder at that point. And all I could manage was this pathetic little gurgle of a noise instead. That scrap of noise, faint as it was, was enough to set off the shadowy little shape. <laughs> it's, it hovered near my bed, intensified, leaving me gagging and gasping for clean air. And a small hand reached up to my head, resting against my scalp for the barest moment. And then grabbed hold of my hair in a painfully tight grip, and it started yanking each violently tug, sending a burst of fresh pain through me. It was that pain that finally freed me from my paralysis, the one that had been holding me in place. And I went tumbling over to the side of the bed and stumbled my way to the door. Each step was unsteady, and my arms and legs felt like they'd been asleep, grudgingly responding to my demands and filled with tingled pins and needles. It was as if I was making my escape, my hand wrapping around the doorknob. I felt a fresh wave of sparing agony tearing down my back as something warm and thick began to send trickles down my spine. Coming out of the door, I made it to the clerk's office who took one look at my state and immediately called an ambulance. Several tufts of my hair had been ripped out of my head, and I still have a little bald spot, just right here, where the hair hasn't grown back in yet. No, it's my back that was the worst. Just between my shoulder blades and the stretching around six inches down, four deep grudges. It was going to need stitching, at least. I haven't been back there since, and I don't plan on ever going back. Now, if you want to poke around there, hit me up and I'll tell you the name of the place. But it's my voice. It's my choice. I'm telling you. I would stay the hell away. Whatever is in there, it's angry, and it doesn't take well to visitors. <laughs>